Monday, July 1st, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's weather forecast, we're going to be looking back at June of 2024 with the month and statistics. We'll also look at your July forecast here in today's video, including temperatures, precipitation, severe weather, and your July tropical weather forecast at the end of this video for both the Eastern Pacific Ocean and the North Atlantic Ocean as well. So let's look back here at June, and it was a very warm month across the south central U.S. You can see all the oranges here. That is above normal temperatures for this time of year. And then across the north into southern Canada, the Canadian prairies, and the upper Midwest, we saw near normal to slightly below normal temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit for the month of June. And we look over here at precipitation. It was a very wet month across the upper Midwest in towards Lake Michigan and Lake Superior. And it was a, an event, a very eventful month as well for central and southern Florida with some very heavy flooding rains for places like Fort Myers, Naples, all the way down there towards portions of Key West. So we saw a lot of rainfall there. Let's look at our uh, precipitation anomalies for June. And we, we told you that it was very wet across the upper Midwest. And this anomaly map shows how wet it was. Three to six inches above average it was across portions of Minnesota, Iowa into Wisconsin and with a lot of significant river flooding still ongoing today across those areas. Very heavy tropical induced rains across central and southern Florida. Some hit or miss rain showers that were above normal there for the southern and central plains. Places like Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Missouri, Arkansas, and Louisiana. Some monsoonal moisture kicking up across the Four Corners region, but it was very dry across the mid-Atlantic into the southeast coast and then across the northern Rockies as well well for the month of June. So let's look here at the uh, forecast for July moving forward. But beforehand, if you are not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe to the channel below. We do cover North America, including Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics right here on Weather on the Go. We'll do it every single day for the most part. Make sure to give the video a like down below by giving it a thumbs up if you do enjoy this type of content. Also, leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. We'll get to those later on after the video. So let's update you on the climate statistics here. We are in what we call an ENSO neutral conditions. And basically, this means we are not in El Nino anymore, and we're not in La Nina. We're kind of right in between there at plus 0.155. So we're getting very close to La Nina conditions, but we're not quite there yet. We see kind of a hodgepodge, a mix and match type of thing going on here into the equatorial Pacific Ocean with cooler temperature anomalies and also warmer temperature anomalies. They're kind of mixed there. So that's why we do have those ENSO neutral, neutral conditions continuing. And the Climate Prediction Center, the experts over there are actually forecasting a La Nina to begin next month in August. So definitely seeing that up to 65% chance of La Nina as we go into the new month there of August next month. But we will see that ENSO neutral conditions continue through the month of July here. And and that's what we'll see across North America. What though is a La Nina pattern? Basically what this means is we have cooler air coming down from Alaska into Western Canada there and into the Northern tier of the United States. It's generally bringing more wet conditions with that variable Pacific jet stream across the Pacific Northwest, Northwest that's very amplified. And then the jet stream as it lifts north will take away the moisture from the southern U.S. So we have drier air down here. It's also warmer as well. And then we start to see those jet streams come together here and consolidate across the Ohio Valley into the Great Lakes. That's where we see the wetter conditions. And that is what a La Nina pattern is. So let's look, walk you through week by week what we can expect as we go through July. July 1st today through July 8th, you can see there is a trough across the northern U.S. And there's going to be more than one of these that are going to be scooting through from west to east across the Midwest into the Great Lakes and Northeast through the month here into the first week of the month. And then that will squash that ridge further to the south. But the ridge will begin to build out west. And what a ridge is going to do is bring warmer temperatures. So look at California. We're well above normal here with our temperatures as we go through the first week here up to 13 degrees above average. We're going to see some warmer temperatures again across Oklahoma, Texas, along the Dixie Alley here, and then up through the east coast coast and the cooler anomalies to the north is represented by that trough, more cloud cover, more precipitation chances here. So that will trend temperatures down below average through the first week there of the month. 
And you can see that very well here on the precipitation map. You can see it's going to be very wet for the Midwest into the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, and parts of interior New England. Although I think southeastern Canada, like Ontario and Quebec, will likely be very wet. Pretty wet down here. Maybe some tropical moisture for the southeast coast, like southeastern Alabama, southern Georgia, and the Carolinas and Florida. And we also have some monsoonal moisture moving up there into New Mexico, West Texas, and Colorado. That will be a big help for the drought down there but look out west california utah nevada oregon idaho and washington state very dry through the first week here of the month as we go into the second week of july july 8th through the 15th the ridge begins to build and amplify across the west and we still still see a little bit of that tro uh, trophiness across the great lakes here if you want to call it that um, where we have the cooler great lakes of the S lake superior maybe some cooler weather down in eastern canada but that will be short-lived this will be a more progressive pattern from west to east so i think the heat builds out west first and starts to translate further to the east later on as we get toward the middle of the month by the 15th across the u.s and this will bring some precipitation. Again, this could be tropical induced across the East Coast. We'll have to wait and see on that, but that's generally where the more active weather will be. We still will have some active weather in the Corn Belt in the middle of the country, but I think out West, largely gonna be dry underneath the ridge of high pressure. That's where the center of that ridge will be. Going into the third week of July, July 15th through the 23rd, this is the second half of the month. Look at that ridge really start to begin to build across the four corners there of Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. Mexico, and that will encourage an even warmer, more moist air mass across the United States. And this is true summer, folks. You can see all the way up into portions of Canada and into most of the western two-thirds of the country here along and west in the Mississippi River going to be very hot into the third week of July. And you can see the eastern U.S. still near normal, but slightly below normal trending as we go into that week as well. But we're also seeing, again, more tropical-induced rains and also just some active weather in general across the eastern parts of Canada and then down into the eastern U.S. The middle part of the country still active a little bit at times, but again, the west just very dry as we go into the third week of the month. Finally, the last week of July, July 23rd through the 31st time frame, that ridge just expands in coverage across the southwest and the center of the country, so much more of the middle of the country and the western two-thirds of the country will be well above normal with our temperatures, and this is late July, folks, so when it's already hot in July with your normal temperatures well above normal means it's just going to be a scorching heat across the middle of the country again west of the mississippi river is where it's going to be most potent near normal maybe even trending slightly below normal with our temperatures near the southeast coast and up the east coast at times especially if we get any tropical influence there and you can see maybe even seeing that on the precipitation map again favoring the east a little wet in the middle there and then across the west it's pretty dry for the most part as we go through the last week in July. Let's look here at the experts, the Climate Prediction Center that put together the monthly temperature outlook for July of 2024, and they do agree that we're going to have above normal temperatures across the west and across the south and parts of the southeast like we've been seeing, equal chances of above or below normal temperatures across the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes as we go through the month there of July. And you can see some a couple hot spots for precipitation for July as well. You can see that'll be really the uh, portions of the Four Corners region with the monsoonal moisture, the upper Midwest, the eastern U.S., and then in the middle here from the Southern Plains, the Red River Valley area up there toward the Ozarks of Missouri, below normal trending as we go through July, and then across the Pacific Northwest like we showed you as well. And also Alaska will be pretty active as well with above normal precipitation. Looking at the drought outlook for the month of July from today all the way through July 31st. A lot more areas of drought development here in the yellow are expected across much of the Pacific Northwest, the Northern Rockies, parts of the Southern Plains and the Central Plains there, Kansas on southward, and then parts of the Ohio, Tennessee River Valley, the Southeast and into the Mid-Atlantic Coast, likely seeing that drought expanding and intensifying here as we go through the month of July. And looking here at the weather on the go, severe weather forecast for July. This is all the way through the 
the 31st. It's very likely here that we do see severe weather across portions of the upper Midwest into the Great Lakes and northern Ohio Valley there, closer to Lake Erie and Lake Huron, and you can see up there toward western New York State. This is climatologically the more active time of year up here in the northern U.S. We start to cool it down with the severe weather further to the south, but it's still possible across portions of the United States. It's still summer after all, so we'll have to continue to watch the severe weather all throughout the 50 states. We also have to bring this up again. There is going to likely be a strong ridge of high pressure, maybe or maybe not into the Southeast US like you sh uh, like it shows here on this graphic, but you can see the airflow around the high pressure will always be clockwise. And we have to watch out for what we call progressive derechos. And these are more rare, but here climatologically, we see those once every year for places like Chicago, Indianapolis, Detroit, and Cincinnati and Louisville and areas further South as well towards say Memphis, Memphis, St. Louis, and Little Rock. And you can see even four derechos every three years there in areas like Joplin, Tulsa, and Fayetteville, Arkansas. So there is a derecho climatology there. And you can see derecho frequency by month. You can see we have that kind of ticking upward again, kind of that second season, if you will, into July up to 21% frequency. And note, 70% of all derechos occur from May through August. So we're still solidly in that time frame. And you can see them any month out of the year. And what derechos are essentially are fast moving lines of storms like bow echoes on radar basically producing hurricane force wind gusts for at least 2,000 miles in, in distance so they definitely could produce a lot of damage they have been known to produce damage in uh, you know flattening out cornfields uh, silos and stuff like that a lot of roof damage tree damage and extensive damage at that that is what that could happen in July we'll keep an eye on that turning over to the tropical update here and what we could see for for July for the tropics, you can see we are solidly here and still the climatologically, you know, inactive time of year in the North Atlantic Basin, but look how it jumps as we get closer to August. So we're not even close to the peak of the hurricane season yet in the North Atlantic Ocean. We are very active um, here in the Eastern Pacific climatologically, but looking first here at the North Atlantic Basin, it has been remarkably warm with our sea surface temperature anomalies in the main development region, what we call the MDR, also the Caribbean and the Gulf and the Western Atlantic here is remarkably warm. So no surprise that we have a category four hurricane that has already been the first ever Category 4 hurricane barrel that has ever formed in June and the farthest east since 1933 here in June as well. So definitely very impressive. Going through July, we're going to see more of those systems coming off of the coast of Africa, moving through the MDR, the main development region, crossing over through the Lesser Antilles here into places like Barbados, Grenada, St. Vincent there, and then across portions of, say, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, into the Dominican Republic, Haiti, Cuba. You all have to watch this. And then toward the Yucatan, Belize, southern Mexico, we have to keep on watching this, and Honduras as well. So a lot of areas down here need to be on high alert through July as more systems are possible. Also potentially another hot spot if we get a cold front to move across the eastern U.S. is off the mid-Atlantic or southeast coast. We'll have to watch the Carolinas and Virginia and Georgia and Florida for potentially some tropical activity through the month of July as well. And that's likely where we could see that as we go deeper into the month. Climatologically, you see 30 to 49 named storms per 100 years off the Virginia Beach coast there and just up there toward the northeast and then some active weather there again where we talked about the main development region and the Caribbean. And looking here at the hurricanes, same thing. We have to watch the hurricanes over here in the Gulf and across the eastern coast of the United States here in the North Atlantic. The eastern Pacific on the other hand, is actually quite cool right now. The shelf waters near the west coast of Mexico and the Baja of California, very, very cold here. In fact, for this time of year, there is some warmer waters in the mix, but that's well out in the tropical Pacific Ocean. And it likely will be a very quiet July across the eastern Pacific because we are an Enso neutral and trending towards La Nina. So that'll quiet down the eastern Pacific. That's not to say that we can't see a system over here or two, but I think over 
overall a pretty quiet season, at least for July in the Eastern Pacific Ocean. But climatology that does argue that it could get active here um, into the Eastern Pacific. You have over 150 named storms per 100 years, again, just off the coast there of Cabo San Lucas. And you can see the hurricanes very active there as well. But again, we're trending towards La Nina. So it's pretty doubtful that we're going to have that active of a season, or at least here for July in the Eastern Pacific Ocean. Thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy today's weather forecast, give it a like down below. Leave any comments questions and concerns below we'll get to those after the video and also subscribe to the channel we'll have another weather forecast update for you tomorrow talking about extreme heat and humidity looking at more severe weather chances across the u.s and tracking hurricane barrel as it makes its way west through the caribbean here and also potentially looking at our next tropical system developing into the lesser antilles tomorrow's video as well thank you all for watching have a wonderful rest of your monday out there